，太阳急速老化，将会不断膨胀，吞没整个地球。由于气候的剧烈变化，人类将离开地表，永远移居地下城。Question remains. Now, what should we do? All countries and regions around the world will mobilize all resources to construct 10,000. 建造一万座行星发动机。The planet is full of systems. I know you have seen the recent blockbuster, The Wandering Earth, which has made such a hit in China during the Spring Festival time. As a space scientist yourself, how do you think of the movie? Well, of course, this is a very good movie. Uh, it has some uh, some factors that is real and something uh, that is fictional. I have talked to the media that, uh, of course, uh, some in the future it will die, and finally it will turn into a red giant. At that moment, uh, not only the Earth, the Mercury, the Venus, and even the Mars will be swallowed by the Sun. So the Earth will be destroyed uh, uh, in the future. But that will happen about five billion years later. In the movie and also in the novel of Mr. Liu Cixin, it mentions that the Earth will be propelled by the fusion power. Uh, but you know that in the movie it used silicon because you know that uh, we cannot find so many hydrogen, but only uh, the uh, silicon from the rocks and use the mm -hmm. silicon to uh, have the fusion uh, fusion reaction. But indeed, that's really dif uh, difficult. Mm -hmm. uh, and it is impossible to uh, change the orbit of the Earth uh, to an escape orbit with this uh, silicon. We choose hope. From the headquarters of the People's Daily in Beijing, this is People's Daily Talk. And joining me today is Professor Yang Yuguang from China Aerospace Science and Industry Corporation. It's great to have you, Professor Yang. Mm -hmm. You know, the reason that I ask that question is because many people are saying this movie not only reflects that the movie production capability in China is improving, but also it reminds of us that in reality, China's space technology is also making huge progress. And one of the recent highlights, I have to say, is the Chang'e 4 mission. Uh, well, at the beginning of this year, China successfully landed a lunar probe on the far side of the moon. This is humanity's first ever and a historic move. So can you brief us what exactly is the probe doing on the far side of the moon? On the lander, we have uh, four major payloads. Uh, the, the landing camera is to record the video during the landing. And the terrain camera, with this camera, we can have a, a direct view of the lunar surface on the far side of the moon. And with a low frequency uh, spectrometer, which is a cooperation with uh, Netherlands, uh, we can perform a radio astronomy study. We can study uh, the activities of the sun, such as uh, the burst of the sun. And the other payload is the uh, neutron and the dosimetry uh, detector. And this can be recognized as a preparation for the future potential manned missions to the far side of the moon. And of course, on the rover, one is a panoramic camera, uh, which can have images of the uh, on the path of the rover and also uh, in, uh, in surrounding areas. Also, we will have a uh, lunar penetrating radar. Uh, so it will measure the, the crust the structure and beneath the surface uh, to about several hundred meters. Uh, and another uh, device is a visible and near infrared uh, spectrometer. Uh, with this device, we can, uh, we can measure the components uh, of the materials on the lunar surface. Besides these instruments, we also have a very interesting scientific research instrument for outreach, which is a very small ecosystem. Uh, in this uh, sealed device, uh, we have the, uh, some, uh, some plants, uh, such as the, the cotton seeds, the potatoes, uh, and other uh, other vegetable seeds, and also we will have the uh, the eggs of the uh, the fruit flies. I actually uh, gather a bunch of questions from online. They are some of them are from domestic, some of them are from international mm -hmm. uh, netizens. Some of the questions are very tricky and interesting, so I'm gonna share with you and to see if you can respond to to them. Okay, this one. So, will this soft landing launch a new round of space race? Uh, While well, I don't think uh, there will be a uh, space race either between China 
and the U.S. or between China and India, uh, Japan, uh, Japan. We know that uh, according to the White Book of China Aerospace Activities, uh, we China develop the space technology according to our own needs. We don't compete with any other countries. It is meaningless to compete with other countries. So uh, we always emphasize a peaceful use of the uh, universe, and uh, I don't think there will be a, a race. Okay, there's one person saying, why the photo sent back is not very clear, and my phone can do a better job than that. Uh, well, you can have a very clear uh, mm -hmm. photo with your camera, but you cannot have a photo of the far side of the moon on the ground. So, uh, you know, that the lunar surface is very, has a very crucial environment. Uh, in the day, it, uh, the, the temperature will raise to more than 100 uh, degrees centigrade, and uh, uh, at night, it will be below 180 degrees uh, Celsius. So, uh, uh, to have a better, um, better view and a better image of, uh, from the camera, we need to adjust many parameters of the, uh, of the equipment, of the camera. It is a very difficult task. And also, we should consider the influence of everything. Mm -hmm. Right. So the next question is actually relates to the fact that you say the temperature on the far side of the moon is actually much colder than expected. So this question asks, will this affect the use of the battery? So you know that we have solar panels to get power from the sun. And we have storage batteries to store the energy. Uh, but this energy is not... Uh, big enough to keep the temperature of the spacecraft during the 14-day lunar night. So uh, it is very necessary this time. We use also a similar measure as a, uh, like the Chang'e 3, the radioisotope heater device. Uh, mm -hmm. this, with this, we can have continuous supply of heat and keep the temperature of the lander and the rover. So the next question is, will China establish a long-term scientific base and even an immigration base on the moon? I don't think immigration uh, is necessary. Uh, the moon in the future will become an outpost of human beings uh, to, uh, to, to other satellite bodies and for utilization of the universe. But it is not a good place for the residents. Uh, that costs uh, a lot and is meaningless. So I think uh, it will be meaningful to have a base for scientific research and for the exploration of the moon, not for common residents. Okay, so the next question, I think you already touched upon on it, on it already. So will China share some of the research data with the rest of the world? It's already done. It almost become a, a habit for any space-capable nation that, uh, including China, U.S., Europe, and Russia, we uh, open the scientific research data to the public uh, mm -hmm. for any uh, uh, deep space missions, such as the lunar missions or Mars missions or other missions. So uh, generally, in terms of space technology, can you, you know, point out some areas that probably China is catching up with those space powers? Uh, of course, this time we made the first, uh, the first uh, soft landing on the far side of the moon. Uh, and, uh, you know, that uh, even the United States has contacted, uh, according, to, according to the introduction of the China National Space Administration, uh, they hope that in the future they can utilize the Magpie Bridge because they also hope that they will have a uh, soft landing mission on the far side of the moon. And uh, because they don't have the budget to, uh, to build this data relay satellite, so they, can, they hope that we can uh, prolong the lifespan of the, the, the Magpie Bridge and they can use this uh, Magpie uh, Bridge as their data relay satellite. So in the future, I believe this will be a good thing for the, uh, for the whole world and benefit the whole world. And, uh, and of course, uh, since uh, Chang'e 3 and this Chang'e 4, uh, we China is the first country to perform the lunar-based uh, astronomy study. Uh, the Chang'e 4, as I mentioned, the Chang'e uh, 3 performed uh, optical one, uh, mainly in ultraviolet band, and this Chang'e 4 on the radio wave band in low frequency. So this, we also made the, this uh, the, the first time uh, for human being. Uh, and also, uh, although maybe we are not the best, but the China's uh, space activities uh, have its own features. For instance, our Beidou navigation satellite system, uh, comparing with the uh, GPS from the United States and the GLONASS from Russia and also uh, Galileo from Europe, uh, the, the, the China's Beidou navigation uh, satellite system has a short text message 
functions. This is very convenient for, uh, especially you know that uh, in a uh, disaster uh, rescue mission, uh, for, for for instance, such as the earthquake or tsunami in the region, maybe the infrastructure for the communication has already been destroyed. So this kind of short message will be very useful in this kind of rescues. That's great. So, Professor, after Chang'e 4, what's next for China's uh, lunar exploration program? The China National Space Administration defined its Chang'e 4 mission as the first mission of the fourth step. You know that our three step has not been performed. Maybe before the end of this year or uh, in next year, we will have the Chang'e 5 mission, which will be which will be a, a sample return mission. I've been to Moscow before to see the. Uh, sample return uh, probes of the former Soviet Union. Our uh, sample return will be quite different from the probes uh, of the uh, former Soviet Union. But that, that design is quite simple. Our, uh, our Chang'e 5 mission and Chang'e 6 mission will be more complex. It will uh, combine with the, uh, an orbiter, uh, a return capsule, uh, a descending part and a, an ascending part. It will be very, very similar to the configuration of the Apollo mission. So this will be our sample return mission. And the sample return will be much greater than the, uh, than the sample return missions of the uh, former Soviet Union. After this, uh, according to the announcement of the CNSA, uh, in the future we will mainly focusing on the South Pole, especially on the far side. Uh, we will have a sample return mission from the far side of, of the moon we, uh, by Chang'e 6. And we will have also have Chang'e 7 mission and the Chang'e 8 mission. We will have uh, on-site studies uh, in the South Pole regions, and maybe we can test many uh, critical technologies for the future potential lunar base, for instance, such as the 3D printing technologies using the material on the lunar surface. So that will be very interesting. That's really something we can expect. Yeah. Um, Professor, do you think China will launch a manned mission to the moon? Uh, as we have discussed, uh, the leaders of China Aerospace, uh, Aerospace has already expressed their wish for this mission. And also, we've already started many uh, critical uh, studies for the key technologies we should master in the future. Uh, but uh, still for the whole mission, we still need the approval of the central government. Okay, great. Professor Yang, it's great to have you join us in this show, and I learned a lot from you. Thank you so much for your sharing. You're welcome. Thank you.